Hallelujah. You are great, oh God. Hallelujah and worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we cry, holy, holy, holy. You are a holy God. You look down upon your creation that you love so much with your whole heart and seeing their sin and how unrighteous they was but you loved us so much you was so holy and didn't want to be separated from your creation that you sent your own son shed his own blood that you might restore us back to your holiness 
where you said that without holiness no man will stand before you see you and we cry holy holy clothe us with your righteousness for our righteousness is as filthy rags and I bless you and I praise your name in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus amen and amen you may be seated in his presence thank you special day special day hallelujah hallelujah do we have any first time guests first time you've been here at the old coy church of God I don't want to embarrass you but if you raise your hand we'd like to recognize you and show you honor and thank you for being here we're glad for our regular attenders of being here and I we welcome you and to our special day. Let's not forget this evening. Anybody can tell me that we're having service where? Right here. Our community unity service will be here. And one of the best ways to honor our pastor and his family is that you to be here and be here at that time at 6 o'clock this evening for our unity service. And... Um, As you know, I'm prone to get myself in trouble. And since this that wouldn't be the first time, and the chances are it won't be the last time. But I would have to say this is not only a special day for our pastor and his family, but this is our, a special day for our first lady. Her birthday is today. You are blessed, brother. You are blessed to have such a wonderful, wonderful lady by your side. They always tell me by, by a successful man there has to be a great lady. And we honor her and her birthday. And to let you know, some of you have brought special cards for the pastor. And if you bring special cards for First Lady's birthday, there will be a basket out on the hospitality table that you can drop them in as you leave showing your appreciation and to all that uh, we'll be doing now we're going to ask uh, I think a video at this time to be played Somebody that preaches the gospel to people. Somebody that like preaches at church. Somebody that teaches kids. In their office. They work in church. At a church. Usually at a church. Sometimes they can work at the cemeteries. Temptations, that's one. I don't, I don't know. Dot, dot, goose. Um, 
sick? Read the Bible. Go to the mall, read the Bible. Who knows? They probably get up very early, like 5 o'clock, and go to bed at 9 o'clock. 3 and 8. Well, my dad's a pastor, and he goes to bed at like 10 something. Chicken, probably vegetables and fruit. Some pastors eat a lot. <laughs> My dad likes to eat cereal and he can eat a whole bowl. Thanks to me. <laughs> Clothes, some fancy outfits, Star Wars shirts, suits. Suits? Tuxedos. Tuxedos? What God wears. Paperwork. Go to church. Teach a bad guy. Preach. He tells about Jesus. Tell people about the word Jesus. He teaches people about Jesus so they can go to heaven. people be saved by God. Try to be like a light in the world and try to get people saved and teach about God. Teach kids about God. I pray for everyone, even if they're not here or sick. I pray for the hope and sick and I'll go. And I would preach a child. Teach other people to be kind of other. In the White House. They live in log houses, apartment buildings, church. Food. To watch TV. To play God. Be a kind. Um, God. God and the Bible. When people pray and do stuff that God likes. People that aren't listening when it's loud. Chinese food. Fight. Clingy. Getting stuff dirty. The devil. The devil. When people aren't listening. God. People. Everybody. Their wife and children. Everybody. They love everything and God. At this time, I'd like to ask the Odom family if they would come and stand in front of us today. And I do want to know as they're coming, Pastor Thomas, do you have disco music in your office? <laughs> okay. <laughs> just want to clarify that. <laughs> I hadn't seen any, but I just wondered if he had it hid somewhere. But I'm so thankful for this special day that we've set aside to honor this family um, as our lead pastor and his family. Um, they're truly worthy of all of our appreciation and honor that we bestow on them today. And at this time, we've got some presentations to make. First of all, Sister Leslie has a presentation on behalf of Amplify, and then Rebecca's going to come on behalf of U-Turn. This is for Mariah. Mariah, I want to thank you for all your help and Amplify. She does such an amazing job. And we have all we do have altar call, I promise. And when we do, she's right down there praying with everybody and she's lifting her hands and I'm so proud of the, the young godly woman that you become and I thank all you guys. Amen. I get two again. I get Titus and Cherith. And it is always amazing seeing you students grow. And I know it's not easy being pastor's kids because so many times you're called on to do things that people probably don't even realize. I've seen Cherith vacuuming in the ministry center when we remodeled. Poor Titus, he sets up more tables and chairs probably than we will ever be able to count. But both of these students are as involved in the ministry as their parents are. And we appreciate both of you all. Thank you. 
I give Cherith the cute card and Titus gets the plain boyish card. And uh, it's an honor to make a presentation to our First Lady. Um, not only does she hold the title of First Lady at the Oak Court Church of God, but she's also our Director of the Women's Discipleship. And she's truly a blessing to that ministry and to our whole church. And on behalf of the Women's Discipleship, I have a gift to present to her this morning. Okie dokie. <laughs> I thought of a lot of things I could do to our pastor, but I know he's going to be glad that I'm not going to do them. I'm going to be nice today. <laughs> he's probably very glad if he only knew. Um, but uh, I do want to say when we were watching the video and they were asking where pastors lived, um, I heard somebody say amen when they said uh, at church because our pastor and his family if we put a time clock on their hours here versus their hours at home, they would uh, have a lot more hours here than they do at their house. Um, but uh, this year's theme is uh, Kingdom Advancement. And a couple of weeks ago when Sister Shelley was ministering to us on a Wednesday night, she mentioned that Pastor Thomas would make a good Moses. And what she meant by that was she was talking about how, the, how organized that the uh, children of Israel had to be when every time they would pack up and move uh, during their 40-year journey into the promised land. And uh, he has definitely got that organization. We could call him Pastor Moses today, but I guess we won't. <laughs> um, but he, he also likes to keep on moving. He doesn't just sit on the sidelines. He's not one of those pastors that just sits down and, you know, well, it'll work out if it works out. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe we won't. But he's always moving forward and advancing for Jesus. And I think this year's theme is, uh, you know, is a good example of how he gets us motivated. And I just want to say thank you for that and for your dedication and your love to us. We love you very much. So he wants me to talk first. <laughs> I do appreciate all that you do for us. Um, we are truly blessed. And I'm thankful, not just for a um, church family, but friends. And um, I'm, I'm just thankful. My heart is just overflowing today because I know that no matter what we do, no matter what we go through, God is going to always be there to help us through thick and through thin. He's going to be there. And um, I appreciate God. I appreciate you. And I'm thankful this morning. All right. Just make sure they all have their opportunity because I have been accused of saying everything before they have an opportunity to talk. So let them go first. No, thank you again for your displays of love. Um, not just today, but every day, literally, uh, every Sunday, every week. And um, by your pouring, by being here this morning, uh, supporting us even this week when it has been some uh, difficult times for our family as we have uh, had to be with some of our family for things that they needed. You have kept up with us and uh, called us and texted us and we appreciate that and uh, I'm thankful for what God's doing in Okoe. Amen. It has been uh, 12 years that we have been connected here, almost six years as your lead pastor and um, who would have ever thought 12 years ago that God would bring us to this day with the many wonderful things that he has done and if Jesus tarries, um, I'm looking forward to the next several years. Amen. If Jesus comes today, I'm ready to go. I preached about being ready to go last week, and I'm ready. And if he comes, I'm out of here. Uh, but if he, if he tarries his coming, we still have work to do for the kingdom. And uh, I'm glad that I get to do it with all of you this morning. Let's just give the Lord a hand clap of appreciation this morning. Amen. As the ushers prepare to wait on you, again, uh, she called him Pastor Moses. He needs he needs that duck, whatever they call. I call him something else. He's the energizer pastor. 
you know, the Energizer Bunny that never runs down. I don't see how he does it, but he just don't run down. And that's because he loves you and I. And he just keeps going and going. We want to show our love and appreciation uh, to him. Uh, this special offering will help us to give him that special extra day a week salary. Uh, if you have tithes, market tithes, that's separate or special other offerings. But all the other offering will go to support this special gift offering that we're going to give to our pastor. We're going to serve you from the rear. Then we're going to uh, ushers come forth and we're going to present it to the Lord and ask God's blessing upon it. Will you worship the Lord with us now as we give unto him? We're so thankful for your grace. And Lord, that you blessed us and that we can give. And we worship you with our giving this morning of returning your tithe to you. And above that, giving these special love gifts. Lord, we ask you to multiply it. Lord, it will meet the need, Lord, that desired need that we have for a special offering for our pastor and his family. Accept these as worship, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. What a joy it is to be with you back in the house of the Lord this morning. Before we introduce our special guest today, I wanted to just again, on behalf, well, along with Brother Renfro, remind you about the evening service tonight and uh, one of the ways that uh, you could honor uh, the Lord, first of all, and honor uh, Sister Wendy and I and our family in this church. It's just a, a push to be here tonight. We're expecting a capacity crowd um, at our community service tonight. Uh, Brother Robert Martin will be with us, and um, our ladies and some of our men will be helping uh, after the service. We're going to serve refreshments, and uh, Violin Road will be with us, and uh, Grace Worship Center will be with us. Uh, Spirit Life will be with us. I'm aware of some of them coming over. I believe Apopka Grace Street will be with us tonight. Our, some of our youth have a drama, special music, and we're just going to have a good time in the house of the Lord tonight. I would encourage you to get here early if you want your seat, uh, but be ready to give it up. Amen. If uh, we have uh, the crowd that we should or could tonight, I'm going to ask our home folks to be ready to give up their seats tonight. And let's just come with a mind to worship. That's tonight. Uh, that's if Jesus tarries. You say, Pastor, you talk like Jesus could come at any moment. He could. And I'm ready. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. But I do want to encourage you to be back with us tonight for that special service. Uh, it is a joy today to have with us Brother and Sister Dillard. 
Um, no strangers to ministry. He's a husband. He's a father. He's a grandfather. He's a pastor. He's an evangelist. He's traveled around and done missions work inside and outside of this country. And um, but the connection he has uh, with with us or with our first lady, uh, he also was her pastor uh, back in 1983, four and five. Sounds like a long time ago, doesn't it? But when you're 29, it's not that long ago at all. Amen. But uh, Brother Dillard uh, not only has been a friend to, to some in this church, and um, some got to meet him on the missions trip that he went on with Brother Hanks back in December, uh, but go way, way back, he, uh, he, was pastor, he was pastor to Sister Wendy. He asked me earlier about uh, what he could say or favorite scripture or did he, I want him to preach. I said, you can tell stories. I'm thinking he probably has a few stories he could tell about Wendy and Theresa and Mark that um, I may need to pay him for later. I may could use those in the days and weeks and, and, and years to come. But uh, what a joy it is to have him and Sister Diller with us this morning. Uh, we're looking forward to fellowship and not only uh, in service with them, but across the dinner table this afternoon. Thank you, Brother Dillard, Sister Diller, for coming and helping us on our special day. Thank you to this church. Um, and I know I said a little bit earlier, but I want to say again, thank you for your, your love, for your support, uh, for your compassion, uh, for your willingness just to uh, let the Lord lead us and, and take a risk sometimes and do things that we might not have done if it wasn't for somebody pushing and prodding and uh, asking you to be stretched beyond our comfort measures. And I believe we can say God's always been faithful. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. What a joy it is to have the Lord with us. Sister Diller is going to sing for us this morning, and uh, we want her to take her liberty. And then following that, her husband will come and minister the Word of God. Would you make both of them welcome to the pulpit of the Ocoee Church of God this morning? share a few stories. Um, Wendy and Mark were going through their teen years when we were their pastors. Such a, such a blessed time to be a part of their lives. Um, really loving the Lord. Worked for the Lord then just like she does now. She's always had such a sweet spirit, a pure heart to work for God and for the things of God. And that's what you need for your first lady. And I know you're very thankful for her this morning. I'm going to sing a song that's called One More Time. And I know we praise Him on a daily basis, but sometimes we praise Him from a situation that's happened to us recently in our lives. And it makes things a little bit more real and His presence a little bit more precious in the way He guides us. Today I faced a mountain Once again it seemed so tall I tried to climb but it seemed I'd surely fall So I knelt and called on Jesus Just as always I felt His presence his hand of mercy lifted me just in time. And I want to thank Him. I want to praise Him. His grace has been sufficient. And like before, He's given victory one more time. He was always standing by my side when the valley was low and the river was wide. So I want to thank Him and I'm going to praise Him one more time. Looking back upon this journey, since the day I first met him, many times his love and mercy rescued me. So again, 
I come before him. One more time I'll stand to praise him for all his blessings. Because he has been so good to me. And I want to thank him. I want to praise him. His grace has been sufficient. And like before, he's given victory one more time. He was always standing by my side when the valley was low and the river was wide. So I'm going to thank him. And I'm going to praise Him one more time. I'm going to thank Him. I want to praise Him. His grace has been sufficient. And like before, He's given victory one more time. He was always standing by my side when the valley was low and the river was wide so I want to thank him I want to praise him one more time he was always standing by my side when the valley was low and the river was wide so I want to thank him I want to praise Him one more time. What an honor to be with you today to celebrate this another year of, of ministry here with your pastoral team. Um, we, Sister Wendy and I, her family, Sister Dillard, we all go back a long way together. In fact, her mom and dad uh, was there today that I gave my heart to Christ the Sunday after Christmas, 1975. Her dad uh, knelt by me and, and uh, led me to Jesus, prayed me through. And uh, I will forever be in debt to them for what... Uh, the contribution that they made into my life. Sister Wendy, um, as a, she was what, five or six then, uh, watched her over the years. We did have the opportunity to be her pastor, and we've pastored a lot of people uh, off uh, pretty much over the last 30 years. Sister Dillard and I have been active pastoral ministry, either an associate or a full time lead pastor. And I can honestly say, God is my witness, she has been, Sister Wendy, First Lady, has been the most perfect member that I could have ever asked for. Absolutely perfect. Even in her, even in her preteen years, she was just perfect. I was thinking this morning about what uh, Paul wrote to Timothy. He said, uh, said, I see the faith in you that was in your mother and your grandmother. Titus, I see that same faith that's handed down. To you and Cherith, the missionary, where is she at? The missionary, don't be surprised what God does with your family and your children. Just be willing to give them to Him. I can't say a lot about Pastor Odom. I never pastored him, unfortunately. I wish I had to stand here and regale you with all these stories about his faults and failures, but really don't see any. Uh, so we'll just omit that and, and, and move on. It is good, before I get into the message this morning, it is good to ha see um, Sister Hank, Sister Rachel, and the children this morning. They are choice friends. Um, it's unfortunate that Brother Hanks couldn't be with us. He's in the Philippines preaching the gospel, and for that we've been, we've been blessed. And you're blessed to send him forth from this church. All that you do for him to assist him, uh, you take part in that ministry. So it is pleasing to us to see the work that is continuing with the pastoral team that you have and what they're doing. And uh, I keep up on Facebook, so many activities, and yes, I'm an old man. I couldn't keep up with him, so 
I just have to find me some small thing and tag along. You know, I don't know where he gets all of his energy. I really don't. But he has it, and God is using it. He's using it for the kingdom of God, and for that you're very blessed. Turn with me in your Bibles to Second Samuel chapter number 23. Second Samuel chapter 23. I want to read a portion of Scripture and then um, we'll talk a little bit about um, several other passages from this chapter. But I want to read verses 14 through 17 in our hearing today. Second Samuel 23, verse number 14. And David was then in hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then at Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through the horse of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things that these three mighty men... Father, we at this time, one more time, ask you to touch us and help us today as we minister the Word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for your reverence to the Word of God today. I have just a simple message to preach to us. It's entitled, What Would You Do for Your Pastor? This is Pastor Appreciation. We'll stay focused upon that theme. What would you do for your pastor? Throughout history, one can find men and women who... Have, have, have had exceptional character and courage, commitment. These were ordinary people who were willing to go uh, the extra mile to do extraordinary things for those that they love. They were, they were willing to face adversity. They were willing to face conflict. They were willing to lay their lives on the line in order to uh, be a ministry help. A ministry help to the man of God. The Bible is filled with such heroes. We can, there's plenty of examples throughout the Scriptures of those that, that love God. Those that gave themselves for God for His use. Those that surrendered their will into the hands of those that God had placed over them. And they were willing to go beyond the call of duty. These were men that was worthy, and women that were worthy of the Congressional Medal of Honor because what they did for those over them in the Lord was exemplary. Now before we get too deeply into our text, I would like to give us three examples, fairly current, one is older, of men who really went beyond the call. Men who, who understood what it was like to support the leadership. Uh, men and women that um, uh, were able to lay their lives on the line for those that was over them in the Lord. The first is, the illustration is from Stephen Ambrose's book um, called The Band of Brothers. Many of you might have either read the book or went to the movie to see it. It's a history of the, of the 506th Infantry Regiment, Paratroop Regiment, uh, or par, Paratrooper Parachute Regiment. I'll get that right. During World War II, Ambrose followed their career from basic training throughout uh, the invasion of Normandy and D-Day throughout the end of the war, and he documented their history, and he penned it in a book. They were affectionately called the Screaming Eagles, so, and they were a band of brothers who had uh, willingly come together to fight against an enemy that was uh, on the verge of taking all of Europe. But when questioned, the senior member, the older member of this group, when questioned about their exploits and about being a hero, he just simply said, and I'm quoting, don't call me a hero. 
I was just one of the boys. I did what I was told. And we'll leave it at that. This was an extraordinary man. Yet, he was willing to do everything he could because of the love for brethren. Another group of men that we might turn to, when you think about those that were willing to lay it all on the line for their leadership, was the 300 men of Sparta who was willing to sacrifice their lives and hold back the armies of Xerxes I with his 10,000 immortal warriors. They came against 300. And there in a pass, some 400 and 80 B.C. they stood knowing that they were giving their lives for their cause. They stood behind their leader. They stood and they fought unto their death because a man inspired them to give the utmost for their families. Uh, when the, one of the most fiercest warriors of that group, when, at, when told that the Persian archers would fill the sky until it would literally glow dark from the flying missiles. One of their warriors let out a statement, and I'm quoting, so much the better. We shall fight them in the shade. This is a man that was willing to stand. Even though fiery darts was falling from the heavens, he was willing to stand and give his life. The third example, a more current example, some of you might uh, remember Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of England, who stood uh, as Ram brought straight in the midst of, of war when the Nazi Germany would have taken his island. He stood and often he stood alone without any help and proclaimed that he would never be defeated. He would never surrender. In fact, he made the following statement. I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears and sweat. This was a man who realized that victory must be won at all costs. But those that were under him were willing to lay their lives down and follow his leadership. England today is a sovereign nation because in my estimation, Winston Churchill, he stood on one particular day and proclaimed victory. Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of all terror. Victory however long and hard the road may be. For without victory, there is no survival. I would suggest to us today, you have a pastor and a team that, that there's none better. And it's victory he's seeking. Victory for your families. Victory for your friends. Victory in the face of a daunting task of winning souls for Christ. And to stand with him and to ask yourself the question, what would I do for my pastor? What would I do for his family? I believe that's the question for us today to consider it. I believe you and I are at a turning point in the world. Jesus is coming. And if he postpones his coming, we go, God needs men and women that will stand behind a ministry team and do whatever it takes to forward the gospel of Jesus Christ into all the world to rescue the perishing, to lay their lives down if need be, to die in battle rather than surrender to the enemy. Never flag, never fail but go forward carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ. I loved I loved Churchill's I loved his response when he stood before the House of Commons in World War II when Nazi Germany, the Gestapo, was bombing England every single day, every single night, leveling the towns and cities throughout England to rubbish. I love his, and I go back to this and I read it from time to time. Churchill stood before that august body and he said, We shall not flag nor fail, meaning we're not going to surrender. We're not going to pull down the British flag. We're not going to do it. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost might be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the land and grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And if, which I do not 
for a moment believe this island or a large part of it was subjugated and starving. Then our empire beyond the seas armed and guarded by the British fleet would carry on the struggle until in God's good time the new world with all of its power might and might step forward to rescue and the liberation of the old. What is he saying? He is saying we'll never fail. We're never giving in. We're never going to pull down the, the, the flag. We're going to march forward. We're going to march to the last man drops. And then someone will come to our rescue. And then God will send strength and help from somewhere else. What we need today, I believe in the church of the living God. It's men and women that will stand straight and all Honorable men of courage and women of determination to get behind that ministry team and push us onward and forward to victory. You might say, what does all this have to do with us? A story about the band of brothers. A story about the ancients fighting in Sparta or the ancient Sparta warriors, what does that have to do with Churchill and his speech at the House of Commons? What does that have to do with the pastor appreciation 2014 at the Old Coy Church of God? I would suggest to you it has everything to do with it. First, it has to do with duty. The duty to rally behind those who give the orders, those who lay out the vision, those who lay out the commands to move forward. Our says, when I went in the military a long time ago, back 1970, one of the slogans we had, I, it was told to us, yours is, you, you, yours is not to reason why. You're to do or die. As they trained us to go into Vietnam. I personally didn't go. I went to Europe, but 49 of my AIT unit went to Vietnam. Many didn't come home. Not alive. They trained us to follow those that are over us to be obedient. They trained us to stand in duty, to stand by and with our leadership at all costs, without which the war can never be won. Hear me. God only has one body.